Hey guys, Lightning here, back from the video, and today we are going to be doing a video about friendship bracelets. Another one, yay! Um, today's friendship bracelet is going to be a chevron. Um, so if you don't know what the chevron shape is, it is, let me get my pencil out, it is like the shape where you have these bands of color that look like that. And let's cut the size of our friendship bracelet. And there we go. So it's going to look like that with bands of uh, red, blue, and yellow. <laughs> one is a bit more complicated than the braid fishtail or Chinese staircase although it does use the knot pattern from the Chinese staircase except it adds another step so if you haven't already watched my friendship bracelet basics video or the Chinese staircase video I recommend you watch those first as with the diagonal uh, version of this. So, it's, this is basically going to be the diagonal version, and if I divide it in two, you'll see two diagonals. So this one's going to go diagonally that way, and the other side is going to go the opposite direction, diagonally that way. So, to do this, we're going to have to do something special. So, as per normal, when making these strings, um, I recommend watching the Basic suspension bracelet because it tells you all about care and keeping of strings. And yeah, so for this one, we're gonna need uh, at least three colors, uh, no, at least two, because you want to at least alternate which one you're doing. Um, but yeah, so at least two colors, preferably like three or more. Uh, the more it is, the thicker the friendship bracelet is going to be. Um, so you don't want to choose, like, 20 strings, or your friendship bracelet will be, like, this fat. And that, that would be neat, but it's going to take a lot more string. And it's going to need to be longer. So, for a normal one this thick, we're going to need a wingspan's worth of thread. Now, if you guys remember, that means we're going to hold from fingertip to fingertip. That's how long we need to go around our wrist. That's because it uses so much string. So, we're going to take all three strings, and I like to do them all at once, because with this, it will take a long time otherwise. Um, so, I'm starting my one knot. And I'm just going to do this one, because this one's going to be a pain in the butt first. And get my wingspan and cut. And then that's going to need to be rewrapped later. So, this is about where the threshold is for I think it needs to be rewrapped and made smaller. That one's being a pain in the butt, and I've used it a lot today. But so then we're going to grab our other two strings, the string, the other two strings, and um, pinch them. And we're gonna put a finger in that hole to make it. You see, then you put a finger in the loop and it will nicely unwrap like that around your finger. So, yeah. And we're gonna go along the blue string. Uh oh. My yellow's being ornery. And then we're gonna match the length. It's gonna be a little long. You can always cut off the ends. So, then we're going to fold it in half. I'm just going to do that off screen because it's really long. Okay. Obviously, if you have four or more strings, it's going to need to be uh, a good bit long. So, this isn't an unusual length. Too much for it. So, to make our loop at the end, we're going to take the loop in one finger, tie it around the other and then pull it off the finger and through the hole 
and then tighten it up. So you got that. Um, then we're going to take our piece of connects, stick it through the loop, put it under our duct tape, and begin. And it won't tug loose. So, like the uh, other ones, we're gonna want to other ones we double over. We're gonna want to separate it out. Put our colors in the order we want them. And you can use duplicates of, the, of colors. Um, basically, you can do it however you want. It's lots of fun. Um, but you can do, do two colors in a row and make thicker bands. Uh, or you can do single colors, or you can do alternating colors, or whatever you want. It's cool. It's all cool in this one. And But you do want the patterns to match on either side, or it won't make the proper chevron. It'll be weird. It would, it would still make a cool design, but it would be more like a braid than a chevron. Okay, so, now that we have them sorted out, we're going to take one bunch, um, one of the sides... Uh, I'd probably start with this side so we can actually see. I'm going to zoom you guys in. So you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Pull it down so we don't have so much of that. I want to zoom it in. And that's as far as it goes. Um, so. My colors aren't showing up very well. I'm going to put a white sheet of paper underneath. Uh, my workspace, so you guys can actually see the colors a little bit better. Um, and let me get my other light because this is a little dark right now. So, back on one second. There we go, it's a bit better. You can see the colors a little bit more. So, we have our colors separated out now. So you have the yellow and blue. So similar to how the um, Chinese staircase is done, we're going to want to make our four for our knots and then loop it through. Now, again, if you haven't already watched how to do that knot, uh, I would recommend going on to the Chinese bracelet or the, chi the Chinese staircase uh, where we basically go over how this knot works. So, you're going to go up with the, the knot, and then you're going to go to the next strand, and do it again. So, again, four, and up. And then basically, this is the knot you use 90% of the time. So, and then you're going to leave this one in the middle, because you're going to need it one more time. So, basically, it's we do the diagonal one on each side. But to connect them, we have to do one in the middle as well. So, we gotta do the other side first, though. So, the blue is in the middle. So, the interesting and odd part about this one is that unless you have the knots in reverse on the side, so that means you make the four backwards and then pull it through. But unless you have that, the pattern will not be correct. So you have to make sure you remember that it's backwards, it's not forwards. As you can see, everything's being paint one and being knots. And then you just pull it to the top and then make it, make another four, backwards four, and pull it to the top. Well, you gotta make the four first. Not to top. And then you go back to your other yellow, take the other four colors aside, and I would do it with the first one and make the four around it that way. Just because it means you don't have to remember to do the backwards and snots for that one. And then to stop. And then this strand will stay on this side. Uh, the whichever one you're nodding with. So how I tend to do it, um, so that the string is already ready in the middle for whenever I need to do it, is I'll start from this side. So I'll start and do my backwards knots first, 
and then go and do the other one. And that way I have all of my strings in the center ready to go. So basically it'll just go all the way to the end. So when you have long strings, as you can see mine are already getting tangled, what you can do to make them shorter is you can make little tiny balls. So you can see I'm making just little tiny wraps around my finger so that you're working with smaller quantities and then take the tail, either end of the tail, um, and just wrap it around the middle to keep it tight. And this will make it a little bit easier to deal with. Um, so basically, let me zoom out a little bit. So basically I'm working with these little tiny balls. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and wrap all my yarns that way so that they're nice and neat so I don't have to deal with them being all over the place, <laughs> which annoys me to no end. So so I've just roll up the little ball. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -doop doop doop And do the next one. Doop 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 doop. And roll. Doop -a 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 doop doop. A little ball red. And then same with this one. And obviously, if you're actually working with it, you're not gonna make them nearly as short as you can see. They're smaller than my hand. Uh, but because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm actually doing, I have made them smaller than I normally, or shorter, the string is shorter than I normally would when I'm working with it. You make these little tiny balls so you can actually, like, maneuver them. Yeah, it's easy. Everything to make life easier when you're working with string. Basically, the easier it is to work with, the more fun you're going to have. And I can guarantee that one. Uh, because if it's complicated, you're likely to get discouraged from it, give up, and never come back again. <laughs> and honestly, I've felt that way before. So, I know when I say that you want it to be as easy as possible, you want it to be as easy as possible. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to do the blue on this side, making our fours. And obviously, when this makes little loops, they make it nice and neat and easier to make the knots. A little bit easier to make the knots. Um, four. I'm going to pull up the top. I'm just going to take this paper out because it keeps like shifting on me. And I'm going to skew you guys back up a little more so you guys should see when the pattern starts to form. And then the last one is the blue. And up the top. And then we're going to do the red. Again, we're going to do the backwards knot. And up to the top. And then again, backwards knot. And up to the top. And then leaving that in the center. And then forwards knot. And up to the top. Forwards knot. And up to the top. Forwards knot at the top. Now that we've gone through all three colors um, and we've made a basic pattern, I'm going to do, um, instead of doing the one knot like the diagonal, we will now do the two. Uh, no, rather than doing the one knot, we will now do two like the diagonal. <laughs> um, so basically, same thing. I just wanted to get it started a little bit to make it easy. And then do one. Loop up, two loops up. And then the next color, one loop up, two loops and up. And this will help make your bands of color a little bit more significant, um, as it will also, uh, if you're making like altering every color, like I am doing with this. Uh, again, you want it to be thicker bands so you can see it better. But you can do it either way. If you want the thinner bands, um, 
go ahead and do it. It works just the same way. Um, it just uh, makes it easier to see. So, and then going to the next color. But you can see it's starting to form that chevron shape at the top. And we're going to the next color. So remember, one knot, two knot. And if I'm doing it not on a flat surface like this, but I figure I would do it on water bottles when I'm camping and stuff, um, I'll be holding all of the other strings at the same time. Um, actually, I'm going to start doing that now because it annoys me when it starts to curl, and that is not something I like. But I will put aside the ones I'm not using at the time. So I'll just drop them to the ground um, or whatever. Um, but then the other side is not as much of an issue, but when you're doing the backward knots, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Oh, I forgot to do my second one on that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed through this and you guys are going to have to see close to the end what it looks like. So speed, speed, I don't even know what to call this. Usually if it's, I'm drawing it'd be a speed draw, but I guess speed not begin. <laughs> So, I'm not going to finish this today. It takes a long time. And if you're making a full bracelet, it can take up to two days to complete. Um, so I don't really have the intention of finishing one. Um, but I did want to show you what it can look like. And please excuse the fact that uh, my knots are looser. Um, it's honestly, I'm used to doing it on a water bottle. Um, so, usually my knots are a lot tighter um, because of that, but um, uh, here is, and it's not focusing, but yeah, this webcam doesn't like me. There you go, that's as good as I'm going to get it. Um, but you can see how it makes that distinctive chevron pattern. And yeah, but usually, as I said, looks a lot better when it's tighter. Uh, it doesn't get this holy appearance. Um, but you can see at the beginning it was a lot tighter, um, but it, it's harder with the little bundles. And I usually do it on a water bottle, so it makes it a little harder there. But it does end up looking nice in the end. And, yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, uh, let me know below in the comments. Give me a like. Uh, maybe subscribe if you want to see more. Um, and if you want to see more specific vi videos on specific patterns or anything, uh, feel free to send links. They won't go through in the chat. Uh, but I will get them, and I will look at the pattern, see if I can do it, and then uh, demonstrate it for you guys. And um, as I said again, if you wanted to look at other of my videos on French bracelets, they're going to be here, here in the corner. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. Have a nice day, and goodbye.